Hello everyone, I've been getting a lot of requests lately to do another video. So I figured today we would just go through my discus room to show you what I have on my shelves, um, some of the supplies I have just floating around the room in the closets and storage, and some of the different things I recommend to have on hand for your discus, as well as I'll show you uh, the food that I feed everything here. So uh, let's get started with that and hopefully uh, you find this useful. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna start with my shelves. Uh, on my shelves I like to keep, you know, this is where my sink is. Uh, that's, um, you know, this is not supposed to be here right now. I like to keep everything neat, but this is a a squeegee, I like to have squeegees on hand to clean my tanks. I like to have a water storage container that can hang on the lid of, uh, sorry, the lip of a aquarium and in case I need to do, you know, pretty much anything in, uh, in that or, you know, maybe mix PP or isolate a fish, you know, you can think of many ways to use that. I like to keep PP on hand. Um, I don't really use it that much, but it's good to have that amount will last me like forever. My Seachem safe goes here. It's currently across the room, so we'll show you that in a minute. Tools and tweezers and pipettes. Um, scissors, sorry. Um, pipettes, scoops, various different sizes of uh, measuring spoons all super essential I think um, sharpies to mark the tank you know I'll use sharpies to um, measure the you know as you can see right here it's very tiny but here and here and here those are my 25% marks so 25 50 75 and I can know how much water I'm changing. Um, I think a motor, motor and pestle comes in handy. You'd be surprised at the amount of uses you can get out of that. Maybe crushing uh, food or fish. This is fry food uh, from Brian Shrimp Direct. I really like it. it comes in a bunch of different microns, uh, different sizes of microns, but uh, this is the one I have out in the open right now. Tape measurer comes in handy. Medicine wise, I think really the two medicines that I would recommend discus keepers to have on hand at all time are Praziquantel and Metro. Um, Prazi is for flukes, Metro for hole in the head, um, treats hexamida. Basically, if you see little holes in your fish's head, basically, um, that's basically the sensory pores of your fish getting uh, degraded by the flagellate. And uh, if you have this white stringy poop, that's probably, probably, I'm gonna say probably here, so don't hold me to it because your case may be different, but it's probably hex. So Metro would help with that. I have vodka up here, not to drink, but to dissolve my Prazi. This is pure Prazi Quantal, so if anyone who's familiar with trying to mix Prezi with water, it does not work too well. So that little bit of vodka in you know, a little container, just a couple drops to dissolve your scoop of Prezi, goes a long way in dissolving the, the Prezi so it's uh, available to the fish in the water column. I do have furin out here too. Um, I don't normally have that, but one of my champion, he had developed a swim bladder infection. It swelled, I treated it with furan, the swelling went down. Unfortunately, he is really struggling to swim. It's like his swim bladder is not working at all. He's staying upright, but we're doing our best, changing water every day, and hopefully he makes it through. These external temperature controllers are vital to my operation. They allow me to make sure I'm actively um, seeing the temperature of my tank, as well as setting the temperature of the heaters inside, say, this water storage vessel where I cannot get into 
uh, the top or bottom vessels heaters to change their temperature on all my tanks I exclusively use um, I say exclusively there there is one fluval but I have tons and of these Eheim Jaggers this is all I use and they are my go-to heaters those are 150 watts I keep one 150 watt per 55 uh, or 60 gallon tank and I'm pretty sure in my 30 gallon tanks yeah these are uh, 100s so my 30 gallons technically 29s I keep hundreds in my 220s one there one there I have two 300s each and those are connected to every single tank has these external temperature controllers as you see here here there's it's probably hard to see there's three here and then there are three over there they're vital we have a temperature and humidity reader no not 100% accurate but enough just to get by this is just the the temperature is almost 76 degrees because of the ambient temperature of the room from the tanks being heated to 83, 84 degrees. My humidity is pretty low as well. All things considered, having almost you know, around 2,000 gallons in this room. Power strips, can't get enough of those. Toggle switches for on and off. Helps with pumps and what and lights. I really like these metal air valves. They are far superior in my opinion to the plastic ones you'll see out there. These are fantastic. I love them. This is a water sensor. This is connected to that. It's an alarm. It will ring if there's a water leaking out of this tank. I've been having trouble with this tank. They, each one of these tanks has a uh, float valve, but the bottom uh, in this in this bottom container, the float valve is malfunctioning, so it will overflow. And if I do not catch it in time, the water will rise up and overflow the lid, touch the sensor, and uh, cause an alarm. So I'll know to stop the water or else it comes down on the floor. Um, I think tubing, sorry, hosing and valves are super useful to have in your room. Can't get enough of them. Each tank has one to two heaters, one to two sponges for everything but the 220s, which have four. Um, I use the hydro sponge filters the, in the largest size. All my tanks are equipped to have two or more sponges as you can see here um, so you will see two air stones per tank that can be rigged up for um, air stones uh, sorry sponge filters um, this is the temperature sensor for this controller again the sharpie markers you can come in handy for labeling again uh, Alexa is a thing that I like to use nowadays. I have four of them scattered throughout the room. She thinks I'm talking to her. Uh, there's one there, one on top of that tank, and one on top of that tank. Let me see. So here's the 220. You'll see the two 300 heat watt heaters and then four sponge filters there. Remote controls, super helpful because the power strips and the outlets and plugs are all tucked away usually and hard to reach. So being able to toggle on and off pumps or lights or heaters, if I turn, press this, this is off, this is on. If I toggle this off, it'll turn off the heaters in my storage vessels so that when I pump all the water out of these vessels into this tank, the heater, the elements are not exposed and basically overheat and melt or burn things. This is my ambient light.
for this side of the room. There's one over there on top of that tank. It just turned off. I do not keep the lights on my discus tanks unless it is either early in the morning for the wake up or when I come home and am viewing the fish. The only tanks that keep lights on during the day are these two planted tanks through which the Amazon Alexa does control the schedule of lights for these two tanks as well as for the rest of the room. These three tanks are the only tanks that have canister filters on them. In those canister filters are purely sponges and ceramic, you know, pieces of biofiltration. There's no chemical filtration, so it's just mechanical and bio in these three tanks. I have so many of these Eheim automatic feeders. You can schedule uh, up to four feedings a day and they will double rotate on the feeding if you would like. I could not feed these fish and grow them without them, uh, these, these feeders. For anyone who I've been speaking to or is interested, these in all three of these tanks are fish for sale. You know, a lot of you are looking to come in as soon as coronavirus worries and restrictions lessen. In these tanks, I have in-tank lights, which are pretty cool. So that way I don't have to have, as you'll notice, any light fixtures on top of the tanks. These blue lights are on top right now. They're supposed to be behind, but uh, I have to re-glue them. Um, more water storage vessels, tubings. My sponge vaults, here's where I have all my extra sponges. I got tons of them, enough to change out my room completely. Tools, uh, pipe cutters, glue guns, you name it. It's in here, drills, more scissors. All this, as you can see on the labels, more fish and aquarium gear and equipment. It's like a whole box of power strips, whole box of timers and controllers. Uh, this whole side as well. Got a whole box for water pumps and RO equipment. This is uh, my storage. Sorry, my reserve of Seachem Safe. I keep a, a small vessel of it on hand for when I want to use it and keep the majority of it stored away. There's medicines all down there, extra medicines that I don't use too much, pipettes and brushes. Will Farrell and Sheldon Cooper, of course. There's that extra light I was talking about. And here's my little thing of Seachem Safe with the quarter tea, I think it's a yeah, quarter teaspoon in here. Quarter teaspoon treats the 55 gallons. And that's how I use that. Um, other things, TV comes in handy for doing water changes. I'll listen to the office a lot of times while I'm doing water changes, so it's not just me changing water. And bored out of my mind. Speakers too. Um, useful for playing podcasts and doing water changes and playing music. I like to play pretty pumped up music so I can do uh, my water changes in style. Get some fly tying, fly fishing, fly tying equipment over there that I do also on the side. Microscopes come in handy. I have one here and one down here, mostly for looking at fish eggs or fish poop. I'll literally scrape, scrape discus eggs and look at them. I've watched full flat fry developments um, just by using microscopes. Here's all my food. Uh, all this extra food goes into my beef heart as needed uh, to add nutrients and binding to my beef heart. This, as you can see, I've got tons of this is tetracolor tropical granules that goes in every automatic feeder 
It is my primary staple for uh, food that the fish get, the discus get, and other than that, they will get beef heart. But most of my fish get two to four feedings of that, depending on their size, and either zero to two feedings of beef heart a day, depending on size as well. Like my adults won't get any, but my smaller fish will get two feedings. I pulled this out. This is my rug doctor. It's a it's a water vacuum. You will spill if you are in aquariums. Having a vessel to pick up water that's intended to do it comes in handy. I use that more often than I would like to admit or will ever admit. Vacuums, also super important to keep in your fish floor, uh, fish rooms floor, very clean and suctioning up any extra food that gets on the tank. Sometimes you get little crumbs of, 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 of uh, you know, pellets or flakes or whatnot on top of your tanks and this can help uh, alleviate your problems. Let me see what else. Flashlights, flashlights are super important to me. I keep like two or three spread around the room from just looking at fish poop in the water to trying to look to see if one of your fish is moving funky or in, you know when you're when it's dark and you don't want to turn on the t tank lights to kind of looking at your fish's slime coat to analyze whether it's got a bacterial infection or cross-contamination that comes in handy I you know there's so many uses for a flashlight I just recommend everyone to have a good high power flashlight or two on hand so that uh you know, you're prepared and can have that whenever you need it. Um, probably one of the most important things I have in the room is uh, for all of you of age, a little bit of a nice cocktail to enjoy your fish with. I have a, myself a mule, a scale mule uh, tonight while I'm winding down on this Friday evening during the COVID scare and pandemic so we will uh you know all push through this together and now more than ever it's a good time to be you know with your fish it's good uh for your for your mental health and peace and gives you a little bit of an activity and if you got kids it's a good way to get them involved and see a little bit different side of hobbies than you know what's the norm nowadays gets away from you know video games and really puts life and nature into a cool perspective Um, I got, I mean, I covered pretty much everything. Water pumps, they're in here in each one of these storage vessels um, to fill tanks. But I got a water pump here that comes in handy to drain tanks. That's, I could not do what I do without that. That drains my tanks super quickly. Different tips for siphons for different tanks brushes for the corners and the, the, the seams of tanks, squeegees for the bottoms and the walls, so size of tanks, um, a filter to purify the water as it goes into my water aging vessels or into the tanks. Um, here are more thermometers, power strips labeled. Label your power strips accordingly, that's a tip. It comes in handy. Label your air valves. You can see the blue tape. Label your air valves to which tank or vessel they are going into. Yeah, it will save you a lot of heart, uh, you know, trouble and uh, and whatnot when you're trying to figure out what air is not working for which tank. Uh, that's pretty much everything. I have those webcams, the sorry, the video cameras as well to keep an eye on things on vacation, but that covers pretty much everything. If you have any questions, please feel free to just comment or send me an email and I'll try my best to get back to you. Um, I know everyone's kind of just all over the place right now, so I'll do my best, but uh, hopefully you got something out of this video and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.